Josh Hoff from the Handyman Service. Today I'm here with my two little helpers. We're out here uh, to do a uh, power washing and mold clean up job on this house. Um, this house is a fairly good sized house, uh, all vinyl siding. And I want to show you the uh, different tools that I use, the different chemicals that I use. I'm going to show you the different brushes and pretty much just the overall process that I use uh, to clean and uh, power wash a house with vinyl siding. So right off the bat, I'm going to show you the main tools that I'm going to be using. Um, actually, I say main tool. The uh, chemicals that we're going to be using is going to do most of the work for us. Um, basic things that we're going to be using the power washer for is to apply the chemicals and just to uh, kind of gently spray out the house. So first up is my power washer. It's a uh, Ryobi 3100 PSI 2.5 gallon per minute power washer. It has a... Uh, got a Matic Idle on it. It does have a soap canister, but if you see sitting on top of the uh, power washer unit, it's my foam blaster. Um, same foam blaster I did a uh, unboxing and a review on in uh, one of my other videos. Uh, so be sure to uh, check it out. Um, that's what my chemicals are going to be going on. And the uh, second uh, attachment that I'm going to be using on the power washer is one of those uh, power nozzles. It's one of the ones that uh, spins in the circle. Um, one real quick thing I want to say about the power nozzle, and I know a lot of you watching this video are kind of holding your breath. As we all know, vinyl siding is a very, very soft material, so we're not going to be holding the power nozzle um, up against the vinyl siding. It's not doing the cleaning. All the power nozzle is going to be doing is first we're just going to wet everything down on the vinyl siding um, kind of rinse off some of the dirt and dust that's collected on the vinyl or on the siding and uh, then once we've uh, coated it with soap and give it a good scrub all the nozzle is going to be doing is uh, simply just rinsing everything giving it a good rinse um, the entire time we're doing this uh, and if you guys follow this step, never, and I repeat, never ever put the any type of nozzle more than a few feet away from the house. Again, the chemicals that we're going to be using and the brushing is going to do, be doing most of the work are power washer. All it's simply going to be doing is rinse, putting the water on, applying the soap and the chemicals, and then rinsing it all off. We're not really using it for any cleaning whatsoever. So... If you guys follow this and you do it yourself, please, please, again, do not hold any type of nozzle close to any type of vinyl siding. You will do damage to the siding itself. All right, so just a real quick rundown of the uh, chemicals and the brushes that I'm going to be using. So basically, on uh, the very right-hand side in the back, you see my uh, foam blaster. Uh, yes, looking at this, and if you've seen my other video... I am going to be using bleach in it. Sorry, Ryobi, but uh, this works ex excellent for this application. Um, if you guys have a soap canister that's on your power washer, do not put the soap in there. The main thing is, and the only reason that I'm using bleach in the foam blaster is this is at the end of my wand. So there's going to be no bleach running through the motor or through the hose or any of the seals on the inside of the machine and if the bleach eventually breaks my foam blaster I'm out the cost of another foam blaster um, if you run it through the soap canister on your machine that makes it go all the way through the machine you could be out a whole new power washer so just another heads up please do not run any kind of bleach uh, through your machine at all um, this is simply going to be attached to the end of my wand and spraying straight out from the foam blaster onto the house. So the very next thing, uh, just to the left of the uh, foam blaster itself, uh, we're using uh, TSP or trisodium phosphate. This is a uh, industrial cleaner or a hard surface cleaner. This stuff is pretty much the key ingredient out of all the different things that we're going to be using that's going to get this job done. Um, TSP, it's been around for a long time. Um, it's, it's a powerful enough cleaner that uh, there's a lot of different companies who even use just TSP to clean like uh, engine blocks of cars. And uh, it's safe on vinyl, 
um, especially when diluted down. You got to think we've got water that's kicking out. So majority of what we're going to be using is the water that's going through the hose and through the foam blaster and just a fraction of everything else that's in the foam in the uh, foam blaster. So the trisodium phosphate is pretty much the key ingredient. Uh, next, we're going to be using Dawn. In this case, it's uh, the Ultra Dawn. The reason we're going to use Dawn is, yeah, Dawn, you know, it kind of cleans somewhat, but it's going to do minimal cleaning in this process. The main reason we're using Dawn is it acts like a, an agent. It's going, when you spray the chemicals on, it's going to allow the chemicals to kind of sit on the surface and do its work for a while instead of simply spraying the water with the chemicals in it under the surface and have it just run right off. So that's the main thing that the Dawn is for in this case is to give it that bonding agent where it's going to sit there, let it work its magic for a little bit, kind of kill the mold and everything else, get rid of some of the dust, dirt, whatever, and give us enough time to get in and brush it or agitate it with a brush to where we can have a much, much cl cleaner surface. And then to the left of that, I've got two different types of bleach. They're essentially the same type of bleach. Um, I just went to the dollar store, bought a uh, deal of bleach. The reason I kind of picked it up, I'm kind of curious as to if it works any different than regular Clorox brand bleach, but it says on the bottle, as you can see, that it kills mold and mildew. So we'll see. I've done uh, one section of the house with the type of bleach on the very on the very very left and in all honesty it uh, it did a really really good job so uh, starting on the brushes in the middle row uh, from the right on the right side we've got a smaller brush it's more of just a cut in brush um, it helps us reach pretty much the areas you know they're kind of hard to get to kind of tricky it's a hard bristled brush so it's going to be doing uh, quite a bit of work but at the same time, it, it's only meant for small cut-in areas um, that we're really not able to get into with the uh, bigger brushes. So in the middle, you can kind of see it on the ground, that's the uh, power nozzle or the turbo nozzle. Um, again, when we're doing this power washing job, the uh, main thing you want to keep in mind is at any point in time, we're not going to get this turbo nozzle close to the siding. We don't want to leave runs or mars or even put holes in the siding. We're going to keep it probably about three, three and a half feet from the siding at all times as we're uh, using it. So I just, I want to throw it out, that out there. I feel like I can't emphasize it enough in this video. Please do not, if you're going to follow these steps, please do not put your, the nozzle uh, very close to the siding. So I would hate to see you guys ruin some very good siding uh, because you're in a hurry or you tried to make the nozzle do too much of your work and uh, you ended up with uh, an eyesore. So next to that, just to the left, it's uh, a little bit bigger brush. It's uh, also kind of a cut-in brush, but uh, one of my helpers is going to be using it kind of cut to cut in on the low spots. Um, it's also a hard bristled brush. And the main brush I'm going to be using it's the uh, one with the yellow bristles. Uh, it's also a hard bristled brush. It's uh, made especially for siding and uh, other materials. I've got it attached to a telescoping pole just so when I'm up high I can extend it all the way. When I'm cutting in close I can collapse it and that way it's not uh, not too much to try to use the brush with the pole. All right, so now I'm going to show you guys how I uh, mix this solution that I'm using. If you remember from my other video, this is an 8-ounce container. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use about 2 ounces, or almost up to this top notch on, this, uh, foam, on the canister for the foam blaster. I'm going to use 2 ounces of trisodium phosphate. I'm going to use uh, 2 more ounces of the uh, Dawn dish detergent and then I'm going to top it off to the 8 ounce mark with the bleach. Alright, so I'm going to show you how I mix it. Unfortunately I don't have like any handy dandy scoops or anything like that. So 
basically I've just got to uh, grab a handful of this TSP. I'm just simply dumping it in there and it's got a little bit of water so we're going to be a little bit above our mark and it, uh, I've been using it a little bit so yeah, just a little bit more and this stuff um, it's going to go a long long way um, this batch of uh, solution that we're going to make up next we're going to add our disc detergent. I know our marks are a little off, but keep in mind, like I said, there's there's already some water in it, so everything's going to be a little bit higher than what I had originally stated. But it looks like we're about at the 4 ounce mark anyway. Now just a little bit more soap. Last but not least, I'm just going to top it off with some bleach. And another thing you guys might be thinking, I've heard of like mustard gas or something, you know, when you uh, use something with bleach, you get some sort of chemical reaction. Well, with the TSP and the Dawn, and the bleach there's no weird chemical reaction or gas clouds or anything like that coming out so you're perfectly safe uh, when using this one thing I will um, advise uh, when you're doing the soap application itself wear some kind of eye protection main thing is, is you don't want to be spraying and have some of this come down and land in your eye um, it's kind of it's kind of potent guys so just uh, you know safety first so definitely use some sort of eye protection so we've got all the uh, ingredients added next step is just simply attach the top to the foam blaster and as you can see everything is kind of separated in the canister so the next thing that we're going to do I'm going to give it a good shake we're going to turn it upside down so we're sure to get all that powder mixed in with the rest of the uh, with the rest of the uh, other ingredients and when we're satisfied that it's completely mixed up there you go it's all mixed together ready to use so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, power washer on the siding just to get everything wet once we have it wet we're going to come back with the uh, foam blaster and we're going to apply some of our soap just to a small area. We're not going to try to do a huge area. Just uh, focus on small chunks at a time. And once we've added our soap, we're going to set for a few minutes, kind of let it work its magic. Then we're going to come back with a brush. We're going to scrub that area. And uh, once we've given, given it a good scrub, then we're going to go back with the uh, power nozzle and we're going to uh, just spray it off, remove all the soap and all of the dirt and everything else that was on the on the area all right so follow along okay just a real quick close-up of the area we're going to be working on as you can see there's a few areas that are kind of green in color all that uh, mold and algae that's starting to grow onto the side of the building so this is the before And after we get done with this area here, I want to show you the after.
you can see, soap's on. Uh, we're going to kind of let it sit for a minute and do its job. Um, as far as the soap that I used, you saw how full it was uh, when we filled it up. Um, we didn't use, but maybe, I don't know, three ounces, four ounces. Uh, let's go with three on that small section. So, using this foam blaster and this method, you can actually cover a pretty good area. So again, we're just gonna let it sit for a minute or two. The soap's doing its job. It's holding all of the uh, ingredients or all of our chemicals onto the side, kind of starting to break down a lot of the uh, mold and algae and everything else that's on the side of the building. And uh, after a couple minutes, we're just gonna run through real quick and uh, brush it down. And uh, we're gonna rinse everything off. as you can see it does a really really good job and uh, most of the work was done was done with the uh, chemicals and the soap you can clearly tell well hopefully the camera can pick it up but uh, you can really really tell the difference between the section that we just got and the sections still left to do so there's a couple areas you'll have to go back over and kind of brush um, and then rinse back off again. Your first go is mainly just to get the bulk of it, but you're always gonna have a couple little spots, like right here, around uh, the dryer vent. Uh, little spots like that. But it just requires you know minimal brushing. Rinse it off again. But, uh, and the cool thing about using this solution is as it stays on there, it'll continue to kill the mold and uh, everything else that's on the building so in time it's going to brighten it and get rid of some of those spots anyway all right so once again this is josh and his little helpers hoffman handyman service um, i hope you found this uh, video educational informal and helpful and if so be sure to like and subscribe give us that big thumbs up right guys yeah yes all right thanks